Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to root your Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL using Magisk. Now in this video we'll only be covering how to root your phone and not install TWRP as it's still quite in its beta stages of course naturally. So we're just going to be focusing on rooting this phone uh, using Magisk. So uh, also keep in mind that this, these steps may change over time and I will be making videos to cater for that. But in case you're watching this in the future Please have a look at the more info to see any updated links or kind of things that you need to keep an eye out for. So right now, uh, let's get started. So you will need to do a few things on your phone, but we'll just start off with the computer and see what we need to download. So first up is the SDK platform tools. Now this is just ADB and Fastboot for your operating system. So make sure you download the one that you can use here. So you can just click on the one you need, agree to the terms and conditions and click on the blue download button. Next up, we'll need to download the factory image for our Pixel 2. Now this is very important, you'll need to make sure it matches yours, your build number that you find on your Pixel. So if we just go back to our phone here and go to our settings and about phone, you can see down here, and I'll enlarge it if needed, uh, that our build number is opd1. all these numbers and then dot .025. So you need to find the one that is matching your current build. Now let's head over to our computer, and if we scroll down or click on the side link here for the Pixel 2, you can see here that this is the factory image that we need to download. So make sure you download the correct one that matches your current build number. Up next, we'll need to download the specific version of Magisk for the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL. Now this is a custom, well, different version from the mainstream beta and also stable releases for the Pixel 2s. Now I'll have this link down below, but be sure to keep an eye out for when the official version actually has these patches built in, so you don't need to use these ones. I'll leave that, of course, in the more info. But for now, you'll need to head over to this XDA thread and download the Magisk Manager 5.4.1. And of course, just save it wherever you like. And something that we need to double check is the USB Google, well, the Google USB driver. Now you can just download it here using this link here that I've highlighted. Now on Windows 10 and possibly 8 and 8.1, you will have Windows already install this Lee Mobile bootloader interface or something similar to that, as well as for the ADB interface. If you have that and it already works well, which you can test out by issuing a fastboot or ADB command, then you don't have to download or install the USB drivers, but download this just in case as I'll show you how to install it if for whatever reason your computer does not automatically install one for your device and uh, we'll get to that uh, pretty much very soon. So let's get started and we need to go back to our device here. We need to enable the developer options and also enable OEM unlocking before we continue. This allows us to unlock the bootloader. So to enable developer options, go to the about phone screen and tap on the build number until you become a developer. You will need to confirm using your pattern. So I'll just do that or password. Once we're, you're a developer, go back one and then tap on the developer options here. And what you want to do is enable OEM unlocking here. So just check that and also put in your pattern to confirm this. Tap on enable and that should just be fine. So once that's on, we can now head over back to our computer where we'll do some more steps. So here, this is pretty much where we want to start extracting things that we've downloaded. So here I have the platform tools, the Magisk Manager APK, and our factory image that is matching the current build that is on our phone, very important. So I'll just minimize a couple of things here. First off, we want to open up the platform tools zip file. And this may look a little bit different on depending on which operating system you use. But what you want to do is extract the ADB exe, the two DLLs, the fastboot exe, and this libwinp thread one DLL just into the same folder like this. So once you've extracted everything, all you need to do is close this and we'll open up the factory image. From here, we want to extract the boot image for our current build of Android. So we're going to open this folder and then open up the image zip file here inside the factory image. Once that's done, you just want to extract the boot image here. Now there are a lot of images, but we just need the boot image. Drag that outside and then we can close both these zip files here. Now this is where we want to enable USB debugging to copy over these files, or you can just copy it using the normal MTP kind of thing. But uh, let's check our drivers while we're at it anyways. So one more thing, we'll go back to our device and also go back to the about phone or the developer options. 
scroll down a little and make sure USB debugging is also enabled and then tap on OK. Now this is where we're going to plug in our device into the computer using the USB Type-C cable. Once it's plugged in, uh, hopefully you should hear some noises, but if not, let's go back and check that our device is connected to our computer using the Device Manager on Windows. So I'm going to right click on the Start menu, or the button, and click on Device Manager. This will be a little bit different for um, Windows 7 users, but if you're on Mac OS or Linux, you don't have to do this, as the drivers are kind of already pre-configured to be used with your operating system, which is quite neat. And you can see the Android device connected to the Android Composite ADB interface. Now if yours says Li Mobile uh, ADB interface, that is fine as well. You can leave that as be. But I'll show you how to install the drivers anyways on, say for example, Windows 7 here. So basically all you need to do in this case, you want to have already downloaded the USB drivers here. It's just in my downloads folder. So you want to open up the USB drivers zip file. And from here you want to extract just the whole USB underscore driver folder like that. And then we can close this. And then from there you want to click on the start button. And then right click on computer and click on manage. And once the computer management window opens up, you want to click on device manager. Now I'm just going to connect my phone to this virtual machine. So you can see here in this example, when I plug in my Pixel 2 into this virtual machine with no drivers configured, you can see how it comes under other devices and you've got a little triangle exclamation warning for the Pixel 2. It could be named something else, so keep an eye out for that. All you have to do is right click and click on update driver software. Click on browse my computer for driver software. And then from here you want to select or browse for the USB underscore driver folder that you've extracted just then. Click on OK. Make sure include subfolders is checked. Click on next. This will install the driver software. And you may get a prompt to ask you if you trust the drivers from this company or well, Google Incorporated. Make sure you click always trust or something along the lines of that and click on install. Once that is done, you'll install under the Android Composite ADB interface and that'll pop up at the top just like on Windows 10. So I'm going to do the rest on my main computer and uh, let's do that. So once your drivers are installed, all you need to do is open up a command prompt, PowerShell or terminal window at the same location as where all your ADB and fastboot uh, executables are. So all you have to do is, or at least on Windows, hold shift and right click on an empty space and I'm going to use this uh, console emulator instead just so I can uh, show you things a little bit better. We can close device manager. So from here what you want to do is now test that your device has been connected properly. So I'm going to type in ADB devices and this will load up the ADB daemon and on your phone you will need to check this a allow USB debugging. You can tap on always allow from this computer and tap on OK. Now as you can see from the command prompt it actually says unauthorized. Now if we try this again you can see now our device is now attached and shows as device rather than unauthorized. So double check on that. So now we're just going to copy the boot image that we've extracted earlier to our phone. I'm just going to change the USB mode to transferring files and then going to head back to our computer here uh, to copy over the boot image to our internal storage. So we're going to type in adb install, leave a space at the end here, and then drag in our Magisk Manager APK, hit enter. Now your phone may be prompted to allow Google to kind of scan your APKs for security, so be sure to allow that if you see it on your phone. Once it says success, it may take a little bit longer than that. Let's head over to our device and open up the Magisk Manager APK. You can tell that we're not rooted here and it will prompt us to install the latest version of Magisk. Since we copied over the stock boot image, we're going to tap on install and then tap on patch boot image file. So we want to tap on three dots and show internal storage. And we're going to locate the boot image that we copied over earlier, tap on that. And then from there, we're going to tap on allow and this will start downloading the Magisk 14.4. So now that our boot image has been patched, we can now pull it from the Magisk Manager folder on our SD card. So to do that, we're going to go back to our computer here and use ADB to pull the image to our working directory. So I'm going to type in ADB pull 
and then the location of the patched boot image. So it's on the SD card, and then Magisk Manager forward slash patched underscore boot dot img, like so. And now you'll see the patched boot image appear in the same folder that we have our ADB files at. What we need to do now is actually unlock the bootloader, the exciting part. So we need to go back to our phone, of course, and we need to reboot it into the bootloader. So this is the part where it will wipe everything on your phone once we confirm the bootloader unlock. So right now, before you do it, it is probably best to make sure you copied everything off of your phone that you need. Uh, make sure your contacts and stuff are synced with your Google account and also back up anything like your SMS history or call logs. So right now we're going to power off the device and we're going to unplug the USB cable. Now to get into the bootloader, all you have to do is hold power and volume down once your device is off. Now in this case we may need to install drivers as well for the bootloader interface as the ADB interface is different. So again we're just going to hold the power and volume down buttons and once your device is in the bootloader we're going to plug it into the USB. You want to go back to of course device manager and double check that your phone is properly connected and has its drivers installed on your computer. So once you've made sure that your drivers are installed properly, we well can double check this by typing in fastboot devices and hitting enter. Now you can see if your device is successfully connected, it will return the serial number. What we want to do next is to run the bootloader unlock command, which goes like this. Fastboot flashing unlock, like so. Now a device will be prompted to unlock the bootloader here. Now we can use the volume buttons to change our selection down here and then press the power button to select it. Now this is just telling you that a custom operating system may cause issues with your phone and something about software integrity and data. So this will wipe all data once you press volume up and press the power button to select it. So you will want to make sure that you've backed up everything. Since I have, I'm going to press the power button and now it's going to unlock and it's going to erase the device. And I can see this new uh, kind of screen here. This is normal. Don't fret, you can't get rid of it. So you're gonna have to see this every time your phone turns on. And now you'll see a little padlock here that is unlocked every time you boot your phone. So this just symbolizes that your phone's bootloader is unlocked. Now that's just going to erase itself here in the recovery. So right now we're just going to wait for our phone to boot back up. So now we need to flash the patched boot image to our phone. Now this is uh, how we root our phone. So to do that, we're going to reboot back into the bootloader. We're just going to power off our device and disconnect the USB cable, and then hold the volume down button and power buttons together until we boot into the bootloader, like so. We're going to plug in the USB back in, and from there we're going to flash the boot image that we just uh, that Magisk Manager had patched for us. So again, we're going to type in fastboot devices to check that our device is connected, and once it is deemed connected, we're going to flash the patched boot image using the command flash boot, flash boot, leave a space in the end and drag in the patched boot image file, hit enter. Once that's done, press the power button when it says start to reboot our phone, and after that we should see our phone is rooted using Magisk. Okay, we're booted back in now. Now let's just double check Magisk Manager. You can see we are rooted now with uh, Magisk, and uh, let's just open that up again. We can see the safety net check, it's just going to download some proprietary code, and uh, I'll just skip to when it's finished that. So here I've just got two apps here to quickly check our root status, since the Magisk manager didn't want to check safety net status, so here we are, we can grant, and we are rooted, and let's just have a look at our safety net status as well. and you can see it passes safety net. Now of course this isn't going to be like this all the time. You may have some problems passing safety net in the future and that is uh, up to Google I guess. So thanks for watching guys. This is how you root your Pixel 2 as of today using this uh, I guess different version of Magisk rather than our uh, official releases and I will be updating this video whenever something changes. So thanks for watching guys. And if you have any questions feel free to leave it down below and I'll try to help you out there and as always Happy flashing.